If we're being meta here, we are making a documentary about a documentarian. So there's all this artifice that's going on with three cameras, A camera, B camera, C camera. So the question is, how much of this is truth? I'm sitting at my real desk and having a conversation that's real, but in a context that's somewhat unreal. The balance you need to have as a documentarian is figuring out how do you get to the truth? And is the truth just something that's as factual as possible? Or is it the emotional truth? Or is it the larger truth? And the Oscar goes to 20 feet from stardom, Morgan Neville, Gail Friesen, and Katrine Rogers. When I started making documentaries, they were like the spinach of filmmaking. You know, it was like, oh, it's good for you, and yeah, they're smart, but they're really boring. That has changed completely. I mean, to me, documentary filmmaking is the most exciting part of what's happening in cinema. You know, it's a real thing of us having a real conversation at the real moment. And if we break that fourth wall, that's a real thing too. People think of documentary filmmakers and filmmakers somehow being different, but they're not. Documentaries really break down like films. We're still telling stories with characters. You have scenes and you have acts and you have structure. And a dog outside, see? We didn't even have to ADR it. The difference is when you're doing a scripted movie, you have a script and then you shoot a movie. When you make documentaries, you shoot a movie and then you write a script. I think of it like putting together a puzzle where you don't have the picture of what it's supposed to look like. This is kind of breaking down the big ideas so we can visualize it. What is this film about? Who is the character? Chronological narrative, sub-narratives, sub-scenes and themes. When you're editing and everything's sitting on a hard drive, it's just really helpful to have it right spelled out in front of you. The odd part in talking about the creative spark with documentary filmmaking is there are rarely eureka moments. To me, it's much more finding paths of crumbs that lead you to the next crumb, and you think, huh, there might be something there. And at any given point, I'm probably thinking about 30 different film ideas. Virtually everything could be a story. Stories come up in real life that you couldn't write because if you did, people would say, there's no way that would happen. And I start thinking to myself, there might be a film here. Let me see if there's more there. And then you kind of explore it. Many, many times, you end up in dead ends. And that's part of the process. I think you just have to trust that if something's interesting to you, it's probably interesting to somebody else. There's no normal anything with documentary. Having done this long enough, you get to the point where you're comfortable knowing that part of the process is letting go. When I start editing the film, I keep shooting the film. I mean, literally, in the edit bay, I will grab a camera and we'll go shoot some insert shots just to play with ideas. I think the most important trait you can have as a documentary filmmaker is curiosity. You've got to want to learn about the world and learn about other people. And if you love that, you're going to be a good documentary filmmaker. I love talking to people. And my big thought about interviews is it's a conversation. The whole idea is that you and I are talking, and the more we talk, the more we can ignore these guys, and the more real it is. And I tell people this all the time. You know, there are no right answers, but let's just have a conversation. We'll talk more about each other. So. You know, how long have you been doing this? Like five years? Yeah, and you've interviewed many, many people. When you make a film, there are 10,000 decisions you have to make, 100,000 decisions you have to make. It's not necessarily getting in every detail. It's about making a film that works cinematically. I don't think anybody goes into documentary thinking they're gonna be rich or famous. And if they do, they should have their head examined. And the only reason to do this is because you love it. It's because you want to learn, you want to listen to people, and you want to tell their stories and share them. And if that's what you love to do, then it's not work. You know, it's something that I can't imagine ever not doing. I want you guys to check this out. Yeah. See if this is what you got in mind.